Thank you, Mayur. Over to you. Thank you. And first of all, I would like to thank Mayur for pulling up this show. Where... Sure. So I would again like to thank Mayur uh, for giving me this topic, which is adult onset type one diabetes, and for uh, setting up the context. Uh, Dr. A K Das sir, I am so thankful to you because you have made my job very easy. Now the flow of the event would be. I will first be talking about the burden of the diabetes which we have, then the natural history of diabetes, how to diagnose uh, adult onset type one diabetes, what are the treatment for the same, and the knowledge gap which is there, and the roadmaps for the future. Because I think it is the platform to highlight all these issues. Now the burden, because uh, there would be some light at the end of the tunnel, that's why I have selected this pick. So the global estimate of type one diabetes in children and adolescents in India is very bad. I I tell you, if they are not at all good because we are having huge number of prevalence of uh, and incidence of type one diabetes in children and adolescents. But the situation is not good in adult onset diabetes either. This is a graph which shows type one diabetes in zero to nineteen years and in twenty to sixty four years, and you can clearly see. that the graph is not declining it is stand still at where it is since 2001 to 2015 now the proportion of us adult which are which are diagnosed diabetes by the age if we plot them we see as the age increases the diagnosis of diabetes increases it includes all type of diabetes the blue is type 1 and type 2 and the red one is adult onset type 1 diabetes so it is on a increase as the age increases we are missing maybe because we are not able to detect it so again india has the largest number of children with prevalent and incident type 1 diabetes as i have told you and the irony is that it is increasing by 3.4% per year while 50% are diagnosed before 20 years of age and 50% of the patients are diagnosed after 20 years of age and most of the time we mistake it for type 2 diabetes because it can make up up to 10 to 30% of the patient which we treat as type 2 diabetes they may have a adult onset type 1 diabetes now we all know this thing this is nothing new to you a person without diabetes has the normal glucose homeostasis but in a person with type 1 diabetes he is not producing uh, enough amount of insulin due to antibodies which destroy the beta cell of the pancreas now coming to the natural history of pancreas and taking back from where dr ak das sir has taken it is caused by insulin deficiency because there is a autoimmune destruction of the insulin secreting pancreatic beta cell which is there which is going on continuously so it usually leads to a absolute insulin deficiency over a period of time a lifelong exogenous insulin injection is what is required to these patients of type 1 diabetes now when we see there is a soil of inherited gene as dr ak das sir told us and then a damage to the cells that make insulin due to the environmental triggers which cause a decrease in insulin production and we see the diabetes so from no disease we proceed to the active disease now if you want to see the pre type 1 diabetes natural history initially the beta cell mass is 100% when the genetic predisposition only is there but if there is some putative trigger like a virus or a environmental factor it causes insulinitis or a beta cell injury uh, also responsible is cellular autoimmunity there can be various auto antibodies like ica gat 65 ica 512a and ia this all have been mentioned by dr das sir and there occurs the loss of first phase insulin response and there is beta cell insufficiency which we start feeling abnormal glucose tolerance test appears and after that when there is beta cell depletion we have a clinical onset of diabetes now coming and again digging more on this autoimmune basis we see that immune dysregulation impacts all the aspects environmental triggers aspect are responsible up to the glucose tolerance intolerance in fact and there are antibodies like gad antibodies ica 512 and ica and all these lead to the c peptide which is undetectable over a period of time and it leads to over type 1 diabetes now there is a proposed nomenclature for this also stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 stage 1 is based on autoimmunity when there is normoglycemia the early phase when the patients are pre symptomatic stage 2 again has autoimmunity because autoimmunity is a core component of these type of diabetes the patient starts having dysglycemia and becomes pre symptomatic 
and then there is autoimmunity along with dysglycemia and patient becomes symptomatic that becomes the stage 3 when we call the patient to be a type 1 diabetes patient now there are various models for pathogenesis some suggest it is primary chronic progressive in other factors it may be benign course of action then there will be relapsing and remitting sort of a trend and secondary chronic progressive can also be there now this is really interesting islet cell autoantibodies insulin gad ia2 znta in pre type 1 diabetes less than 1 is there in stage 2 uh, sorry stage 1 more than 2 are there but the glucose tolerance is normal so in stage 2 what is altered is glucose tolerance because it becomes impaired along with any two of these things and in stage 3 along with these two and more things there is a symptomatic hyperglycemia so this is a proposed classification now who diagnostic criteria for diabetes we all know a plasma glucose level of more than 7 millimole in fasting state and this is all the tough algorithm which is there i will simplify it later on to diagnosis we all know it is diagnosed in the same manner like the type 1 diabetes is diagnosed but the patient with type 1 diabetes usually present with acute symptom of diabetes they have markedly elevated blood glucose levels they have classical symptoms of polydipsia polyuria polyphagia fatigue unexplained weight loss and blurred vision the criteria remain the same fasting plasma glucose more than 7 millimole per per deciliter then two hour plasma glucose more than 11.1 hba1c of more than 6.5 or a random blood glucose of more than 200 with a classical hyperglycemic feature now the diagnostic criteria in type 1 diabetes is same as i have told you but the targets for most adults with type 1 diabetes are also same we need to have a timing range of more than 70 we need to have a hba1c goal of less than 7 preprandial capillary blood blood glucose of 80 to 130 and it all almost remains the same now how and when to test for type 1 diabetes because this is a tricky question because we all are clinicians and in our day to day practice we see patients which are in between and we are not able to decide so a simple algorithm for it 4% of people diagnosed with type 2 over the age of 40 in fact have type 1 diabetes so mind it it is 1 in 25 out of every 25 patients those who are seeing you see more than 40 years of age one would be having a adult onset type 1 diabetes this is statistic now what favors type 2 diabetes patient having a family history of type 2 and there is no family history of type 1 up high bmi a age more than 45 non white ethnic group dyslipidemia specifically focus on a low hdl but if a patient is not having a family history of type 2 diabetes first or second degree relative with type 1 diabetes a low bmi a age less than 45 a white european sort of uh, genetic descent any autoimmune disease in patient and a high hdl then you should think about type 1 diabetes you should think now c peptide can help to differentiate between type 1 and type 2 the enzymatic cleavage of the pro hormone pro insulin it generates insulin and c peptide they are generated in equal amounts so we commonly measure c peptide it is a very common test which we do now the utility is differentiating type 1 from type 2 and identifying patients with maturity onset diabetes of the young modi which is very very tricky now to to make it very simple in comparison to childhood onset diabetes the adult onset type 1 diabetes it has lower concordance rates in twins it has a less risk of hla heterozygosity a lower hla class 1 more protective genotypes and lower grs gada is again the dominant anti auto antibody and it possesses hla dr3 genotype as told by dr das sir but it is little less aggressive in nature you will not find it to be much aggressive as the childhood type 1 diabetes and it has a more gradual onset of hyperglycemia because that is why we are confused and we confuse it to be type 2 diabetes now about lada because the word lada has come and it will be never out of type 1 diabetes in adult onset type it is also known as type 1.5 diabetes it is a diabetes which is typically diagnosed in people over 30 years of age symptoms are similar to type 2 diabetes excessive thirst frequent urination blurry vision and weight loss 
but like type 1 diabetes lada destroys the cell that produces insulin and surprisingly 10 to 25% of type 2 diabetes which is diagnosed as type 2 diabetes is in fact type 1.5 which is lada so how to go ahead with it this is a very simple algorithm type 2 diabetes lada type 1 diabetes gad antibody titer is in favor of type 1 diabetes and lada number of islet cell autoantibody is in favor of lada and type 1 diabetes hla susceptibility is present in everyone most in type 1 diabetes c peptide would be more uh, in type 2 diabetes and would be very less in type 1 diabetes age again type 2 diabetes would be at a higher age with metabolic syndrome and with signs of inflammation so this is a simple algorithm to judge where our patient lies now type 1 diabetes would have positive autoantibody as i have told you clear genetic linkage to hla and very low level of c peptide type 2 diabetes negative for autoantibody no hla linkage and normal level of c peptide but type 1.5 would be positive for autoantibody but low level of c peptide unlike type 1 diabetes which is having very low level of c peptide and shows some linkage to hla this is in between these two now age bmi and autoimmune diseases we uh, asked in history clinical presentation we see look for the signs of metabolic syndrome if you suspect lada then measure gad antibody if it is positive measure c peptide and act accordingly if the gad antibody is negative we should recommend for type 2 diabetes now this is again a new thing which has come up because who has renamed the latent autoimmune diabetes in adult which is lada as slowly evolving immune mediated diabetes of adult in the new classification and these are the points which i have already told you but in autoimmunity point type 1 diabetes have severely increased autoimmunity while it is just increased in lada and ketosis is rare in lada while it is very frequent in type 1 diabetes insulin dependence is right from the onset in type 1 diabetes while it is gradually in lada it usually comes after 6 to 12 months of onset of lada insulin resistance may be increased in lada which is again one of the confusing factors now monogenic diabetes this again confused with adult onset type 1 diabetes type 1 is polygenic monogenic is monogenic this is the as simple as that classification of monogenic and polygenic diabetes but there are many differences acute presentation is what is there with type 1 but monogenic can be variable there is no autoimmunity in monogenic diabetes unlike type 1 diabetes ketosis is common in neonatal diabetes it is if it is there with monogenic diabetes glycemia is variable obesity is usually not high like type 2 diabetes acanthosis nigricans is not present unlike type 2 diabetes the frequency is 1 to 2% of all diabetes in young patient is it is very rare and it is usually having strong association with parent with diabetes so parent with diabetes should put you a suspicion of monogenic diabetes also now this is a very good uh, way to approach diabetes classification a a b b c c approach a is the age where i have told you age can decide whether our patient has autoimmune diabetes or lada autoimmunity we should look for it thyroid diseases or celiac diseases are very common goiter or vitiligo we can see by clinical examination itself bmi is a very important clue if bmi is very high type 2 diabetes mellitus becomes a probable diagnosis background is very important a family history of autoimmunity or type 1 diabetes is very important unfortunately we miss most of these things control control in hba1c worsening on non insulin therapy should prompt you to look for adult onset type 1 diabetes and was there a need for insulin therapy within 3 years of diabetes diagnosis this should be a trigger factor for evaluating our patient for adult onset type 1 diabetes and comorbidity should also be looked into because they will progress much faster in adult onset type 1 diabetes now this is a simple algorithm which i have already discussed with you to how to delineate uh, type 1 and type 2 adult onset type 1 diabetes coming to the treatment part this is a schematic uh, for management of new onset type 1 diabetes in adult this is given by ada and easd it was a consensus schematic flow chart because it depends on individual preferences 
and type 1 diabetes self management education is the key actually to the treatment of any type 1 patient let it be adult or childhood type 1 diabetic patient we should ask our patient to start monitoring his blood glucose values where cgm is preferred modality but all should learn bgm for backup and monitoring if cgm is not available in country like india we should focus more on self monitoring of blood glucose insulin therapy should be started preferably the multiple dose insulin therapy but other regime including pump or hybrid closed loop te technology can be started based on individual circumstances again it is very individualistic if patient is affording nothing like a pump we should prepare our patient for hyperglycemia because we need to give him proper education regarding signs of hypoglycemia how to manage hypo at home and we need to ask them to regularly measure for ketone bodies also and along with this we need to have uh, give them education on glucagon and the other things so hyper and hypo both should be taken into account as far as diabetes self management education is concerned now the general principle for management of glycemia in existing type 1 diabetes adult actually are very simple if glycemic targets are met we need to update them regularly on new approaches to treatment which is available because a, a patient who is on basal bolus 20 years back can now switch over to pump we need to assess it regularly but if the targets are not met we need to see why they are not being met and the type 1 diabetes self measured uh, education and support is very important because we have seen many patients improving out of that only we should discuss the options for improving outcomes because unless we improve the outcome we cannot improve sorry to interrupt last 30 seconds sure sure we should offer cgm if it is uh, they are not using it and that's how we need to maintain our patients now these are the things which should be there in the diabetes self management education at the diagnosis we should tell them about the disease and all the things annually regarding their all the checkups and all the thing when complication develops we need to assess them and treat it properly and when transition in life and care occurs we need to take them and talk to them about the age related responsibilities and living situation changes now these are the various uh, non insulin agents but they are all in pipeline so i think uh, time will come when we will when we will talk more about them the knowledge gaps are many we need to eliminate the cultural bias we need to go for population screening because that is what is most required these days disease modifying therapy in early stage we should instill instill because we need to reduce the burden of cardiovascular outcomes and other uh, macro microvascular complication we need to focus on adjunctive therapies and we need to focus more and more on education the take home is this is a road map to take home we need to understand the natural history of our patient so that we can diagnose them correctly we need to diagnose them more and more because that is what is most important and post diagnosis we need to treat them right aware them about insulinization because without insulin a person living with type 1 diabetes cannot survive this is a life or death issue thank you